I watched yeah. this really interesting thing the other day where the video was called Two Biologists or A Biologist Dis- Defines What a Woman Is. Mm. And I, being an idiot, I thought I was like really excited. I clicked this video thinking I was like, oh, is this biologist going to give a good description of a woman that incorporates trans people? Um, so, like, this is interesting to me. And then it was just it was two biologists basically saying um, a woman is a human female that's so interesting because i i always thought that a woman was someone that you know generally like identified as a woman um but now that i've figured out that all of the intersex women i've met in my life are no longer women I, i'd better update i'd got to update my worldview clearly no, they, they well, right? on that that's that specific thing they was they were sort of explaining away that by going the the traditional thing of like oh these people just don't fit into the category but that doesn't mean the category is it doesn't exist and <laughs> and it, as an example of that what I found really interesting as an example of that they said for example um you have mountains and you have the floor does that mean uh, j- just because you can't tell where the mountain begins and where the floor begins doesn't mean there isn't really a mountain and a floor and that mountains and floors are a construct in the mind. But they are. <laughs> Wait, no, no, no. What they're, what they're a mountain is a is... load of rock in a certain shape, and we call it mountain because it's relevant to our experience. It doesn't mean that there, that, that there literally isn't. Words have but definitions they're, they're because we give them definitions. Yeah. It's weird. Like some people will be. I don't remember. There was like a video recently where someone was just like, "Pronouns come from sex." Like your sex <laughs> pronouns are sex based. Sex based yeah. pronouns. Under a uh, microscope, that's not what pronouns really are. Now. Pronouns are words. <laughs> but it's a language that we've made up. Yeah. Anyway, the point was is that these the, these biologists were sort of saying the example they gave. What was really funny was there was two biologists and they kept arguing with each other about the examples they used, which was especially entertaining. <laughs> but they they used this example out of when does the when does the floor become a mountain. And and that specifically is a bad example. Awful yeah. example. Because but, mountain is just a description of a load of floor that gets pointy. And yeah. also we don't categorize the world into mountain and floor and act as though anything yeah. that ex- like anything that exists Nothing outside of exists. those two hill. doesn't exist. Hill. No, hill. No, no, no. Hill is how, hill, hill is, is an outlier. Hole. No, no, no. Yeah. <laughs> Come on, like, there are there's like one like one percent of all of the ground in the world is hills. So mm. why why are you bringing up hills just to win your argument, huh? Mm. What about a ditch? Really, you don't really care about hills or their issues. Neither do I. But you don't really care. Like honestly, turfs are just like and transphobes are just. I ugh. just found it super interesting. They kept on like shooting themselves in the foot in well, their description. Of I, things. Th- <laughs> I think the issue first off, like right off the bat, with the video title of two biologists define what a woman is. <laughs> so why are these biologists talking about sociology? Huh? Like what, what's their what's their deal, right? Because a woman isn't a biological concept. It's a female, right? right? It's, yeah, yeah. <laughs> if you want to define true. what female is, that's fine. But if you're going to do that, chemist gonna... describes what an, a, a quark is. <laughs> <laughs> what? Like, I mean, I'm sure you probably have some idea, but like, I'd rather go to the guy that actually knows. You know? <laughs> <laughs> but seriously, you know, when we talk, let's let's just briefly talk about this, right? Because people there'll be people sitting frothing at the mouth, absolutely fuming, um, you know, that we've that we said all of this and that we've got a trans person on the podcast as well. I'm sorry for using <laughs> you like that. But there'll they be, will be fuming. There'll be people that are, you know, frothing well, at the mouth. We haven't got it. There's only three of us here. <laughs> okay. <great. laughs> so there, there'll be people that are absolutely fuming, right? Raging. And I just want to say to them, um, okay, let's talk about what sex actually is very briefly, right? So you could say sex is your chromosomes. Okay, cool. Sex is your chromosomes. So one, then what sex are people that have um, androgen insensitivity syndrome who are chromosomally male but are uh, physically m- like appear female because of the the lack of um, androgen sensitivity in the body, the lack of their body's ability to like you know basically respond to testosterone? Huh? What what are they? What are they? Are they you know, just, exactly. They're an so, anomaly. But then also, like, okay, so if, if sex is just your chromosomes, then you can never ever tell me that you care about anyone's sex at all or that sex-based discrimination exists or yeah. any of this stuff exists because ultimately you do not know anyone's chromosomes. I know that you don't because you don't have the you don't have the mental capacity to check someone's chromosomes because you can't understand that trans people exist. Anyway, um the example, they, the example they gave as biologists was the one we've talked about before, which is about um which gametes your body produces sure um, um which but, seems like a weird but if your body doesn't produce any gametes or if your body is capable if your body potentially yeah, has the capability, capability of producing of gametes yeah my, my point is that like ultimately um, is it really relevant we, it's not relevant to being so when people my, in the world my point is that there are multiple, making my point is that there are multiple <laughs> different um like ways that we 
sort of measure sex, right? Or we m ways that we sort of assign sex to someone. Yeah. Um, and I saw someone the other day getting really wound up that someone said a, a doctor assigns your sex, and that tells me that they literally do not know what does anything assign mean? because doctors genuinely do assign sex, and it says so in in this protocol that I read as well yeah. because they look at the genitals and they're like. Which one is this? And if they can't decide, they just do surgery on intersex people. And genitals can be ambiguous, and yeah. they can get it wrong. Doctors yeah. assign you your sex. There are different things that we do to look uh, to look for sex. There are the primary and secondary sexual char characteristics that we spoke about. There's chromosomes and there's hormones. Trans people can change most of those, except for the chromosomes, and that's why you see transphobes harping on chromosomes as the determinate determiners yeah. uh, the sort of determinants of sex, despite the fact that they. It don't even know th what their chromosomes, chromosomes are. There is a solid chance, in fact, I would say there is almost a 100% chance that at least some of the very, very, very vocal transpho transphobes are actually um, sort of chromosomally intersex and have no idea. It's more common than being ginger, isn't it? Absolutely. Yeah. Wow. So if we've met got a ginger transphobe. It's told me. <laughs> <laughs> if we've got one ginger, one trans person, which one of us is intersex? <laughs> we are an incredibly unlikely to be a <laughs> but th my point is that ultimately um, there are many different ways that you could break down sex and it just so happens that the transphobes are saying that the one that is the most important is the one that trans people can't change and it also happens to be the one that literally no one ever knows about anyone ever. I just like, why does any of this matter either? Like the fact Doesn't... that there's like two biologists in a video arguing about what makes someone a woman? Like why? Well, <laughs> Who yeah, cares? It seems like a <laughs> like, strange thing. Like why does it matter? Cause, cause... Ultimately, pronouns and the way you refer to each other yeah. is a social thing. It's yeah. about it's all exactly. social. talking to each other, none of this respecting is, each other. None of and then this is you've gone to like, like gametes in order to justify just using the wrong pronouns for people when they are more comfortable if you use the other pronoun. Hello, miss. Oh my god, I'm so sorry. Your gametes are too small for me to call you that. Mr. <laughs> Mr. Mr. Small Gametes over here. Like... Let me get out my gamete detector. <laughs> what have you got? It, it just kind of feels, it kind of feels like... You know, it's, it's a very complex subject and we're, you know, but it does feel like trying to find a reason to retain an old worldview that you just want to hold on to. Oh, conservatism. Yeah. 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 No, we it's need to like, find a reason find why we were right in the first place it's, and yeah. things shouldn't and change. things shouldn't change. It's yeah. inherently reactionary. Yeah. Like, yeah. In, inherently. Yeah. But then, then you tell yourself that it's not. Yeah, you tell yourself yeah, yeah. that oh actually it's I was saying Mr. and Mrs. because of the gametes yeah. all well, along. There's a reason I'm preserving okay. these silly things. Uh, okay, Ben Shapiro, <laughs> I didn't realize we were we you were joining us today. Seriously, <laughs> like if anyone says that pronouns are biological, Smack it, it, they're lying to themselves. And this is like let's let's briefly just touch on the sort of science aspect. And we were talking about being reactionary and you know sort of um, making making sort of um, the world fit this old outdated model that you've got, mm -hmm. and that kind of touches on. The it is simple basic science oh. aspect. And I want to just very briefly talk about this. I've spoken about it many times before. I want to very briefly just talk to the audience directly here. Hello, audience. Um, if you are someone that is listening to this um, and you have said before, it is basic science. It's high school biology. Can I just tell you, having studied biology in university, biotechnology at UCL, if anyone's going to try and um, have a go, biotechnology at UCL, um, Biology is a lot more complex than you learned in high school. Um, mm. On yeah. many fronts. Are you ready for advanced biology? <laughs> and if you're in your 30s or 40s, um, not only has biology is biology more complex, our understanding of it has changed. And I can tell you that my understanding of biology, like the understanding of biology that we had when I was in university, was changing so rapidly that um, there were new things being added to the course as I started that my lecturers could not explain to me in full detail because one... We like, I mean, basically because we we had only just discovered it, and no one knew what the outcome of it was. Biology is one of those subjects that is nebulous and complex and almost constantly changing in our understanding of it as we learn more and more things. But one thing is absolutely certain: if you say it is basic biology to refute anything that trans people say to you about them being trans, you're a transphobe, and you should shut up because you don't understand biology. Actually read a paper for once. Please, for the love of God, actually read a paper and stop trying to quote your high school biology teacher who told you about sex in the most simplistic mm -hmm. way so that you could get it into your little 14-year-old brain. So you could pass an exam. <laughs>